no team problems for Castleford coach John Joyner, a full strength pack with a strong running back row trio in Morrison, Smales and especially loose forward number 13, Tawera Nikau. The Kiwi test loose forward, a fine runner from Huntley in New Zealand. And it'll be Mick Ford, the half-back, who'll be running onto those passes and hoping to create the chances for St. John Ellis, the league's leading try scorer with 31 this season. Wigan lacking Dennis Betts and Phil Clark in the pack, but if they can hold the Castleford six, then they have some of the world's most prolific point scorers behind. Martin O'Fire, deadly finisher on the wing, 20 tries this season. And Kiwi, marksman, Fano Botica, 122 goals to his credit. And at number 13, teenager Andrew Farrell, a lot of responsibility on that youngster. But Castleford, the in-form team, can they really sink Wigan's cup hopes? Come on! Lee Crooks, St. John Ellis, Tony Kemper, Tony Morrison, what a fine season he's had. Richie Blackmore, Mike Ford, the instigator behind, and perhaps the man of the season so far, Casimir skipper, Lee Crooks with the little uh, mascot. Graham Steadman, speed from the back. Martin Ketteridge, man of the match in that Regal Trophy win. Andy Hay, Ian Smales, strong running forward, and Nick Al. And Wigan, rated as underdogs today, but can one really build them as underdogs with talent like Barry John Mather, Dean Bell on the substitutes bench, Skipper Edwards, prolific try scorer, hard worker Neil Cowie, the incomparable Martin O'Fire, Gary Connolly, the Great Britain centre, and Andy Platt drafted in to the forward position at the last moment. Huge support for them from Lancashire. An excitement in a. Uh, Lee Crooks, 15 and a half stone prop forward, used to heading the here, 150,000 by, by Castleford from Leeds. Pitch in perfect condition, they were trimming it this morning, ideal for open rugby. Packed terracing, the stands filling up rapidly. It'll be a full house here by the time we kick off. Just pausing for the now traditional photograph for the little mascots album. Lee Crooks having the honours and Lee Crooks, the Catherwood skipper, aiming for a fifth Wembley appearance, but unlike Sean Edwards, still seeking a first window. And Edwards only assumed of the captaincy a couple of weeks ago and looking for a record ninth final at Wembley. Stuart Cummings from Witness, 33 years of age, just three years in the top flight. And all set then for the Silk Cut Challenge Cup semi-final, Castleford v Wigan. Tony Kemp to do the honours of the, the kick-off. And Steve, I don't think I've felt excitement here to heading for a long, long time like this. Uh, it's great here. The uh, big crowd and the atmosphere is, uh, is enormous, and I think we're in for a, a very good game today. So, Tony Kemp gets the play underway. Picked up my Wigan skipper. Sean Edwards and uh, Wigan already using these forwards to good effect. Mick Cassidy, Neil Cowie. His red hair, prominent there, Cowie. Andy Platt, rumoured to be out of the side all week, but this uh, Great Britain skipper brought in at the 11th hour. As with Dermot there, the number nine, good short pass from Dermot, launching Skerritt, putting pressure on the, uh, the Castleford. Uh, Andy Farrell, and Wigan uh, certainly looked to have come out with determination here, and uh, referee Cummings already penalising, but a high tackle. You'll have a look here, here in the replay. Um, Tony Kemp just got hand and fell around the uh, top of his head there, but it's been a good good start for Wigan. Wigan on the attack, and Andy Farrell driving him. I said there was going to be some tough tackling, and none tougher there than Lee Crooks. Edwards, Farrell, to Neil Cowie. Neil Cowie, a product of the 
Great Britain amateur rank to gain a creditable 28-28 draw in South Africa last night. And Cowie driving in again. 10 metres. Botica to switch to Mather. Six foot five, Barry John Mather, former Arnold School second row at Rugby Union. Kelvin Scarrett. Tremendous pressure on this Casabon line. The fifth tackle. Botica looking for the drop goal. Oh, it goes wide. Rano Botica, the world's most prolific point scorer. Missing there, but already something's been spotted. Well, that was good work from uh, Morrison here. It's a good chase on uh, Botica. And just under pressure, he just uh, to the left of the post there. And uh, touch touch Tony Brown spotted something while Fran Obotica was taking that drop kick. A little bit of aggravation between Crooks and Platts. Two big men. Catalich. The crowd really enjoying the ferocity of this tactic. Crooks looking to upload the ball. He puts to Richard Russell. Russell, former Wigan halfback, now playing his trade in the hooker role. Graham Stedman. And I think, uh, Steve, that was a good kick in many ways because it relieves pressure for Casimir and it tests this youngster Paul Aitis in a full back. It does that, but uh, John Joyner showed his plan and there was only about three tackles and he's kicked the ball downfield, so he wants to play in Wigan's half. Castleford fourth in the championship, Wigan second in the championship, so couple of the top teams here at Headingley. Scarrett. Certainly Wigan using the forwards in these early stages, I think, to test this castle for their defence near in Neil Cowie. Edwards. The cover kick putting pressure on their statement, but uh, Graham Stedman allowing Edwards kick there to roll into touch, but uh, Wigan playing for position now, uh, Steve. Yeah, there's this great kick by Sean Edwards here, runs to the defensive line, puts the ball straight behind them, they're under pressure. There's a different different Wigan team today, they started off uh, very, very hard and fast, and uh, it's going to be a good game. Carsonford's head and ball from that scrum, and uh, sensibly just bringing the ball away. Tony Kent to Nick Alwine, oh, this is a good attacking chance. Even in the 20 metre area, but uh, Blackmore cuts inside. Sinjanellis. Casper showing how prepared they are to move this ball about. Risky play or adventurous, whichever, Steve. Yes, it's, it is risky, but uh, Wigan were short there, and Casper uh, decided to move the ball around around 22 and uh, made a good uh, break. Brooks. We should look for those uh, short passes from Lee Brooks, sending. Uh, People like Grant Anderson through there. Ken. Perhaps no need for, for Tony Kent to miss out a player there. In fact, very often, Steve, by throwing a long ball like that, you cut out the overlap, don't you? You do, you even up the defensive line there. Sometimes it's best to go through the hands, but you'll have a look here. Wasn't the best pass pass in the world. But uh, last game, uh, Castlewood never made too many mistakes. This uh, game early on, they've made a couple. Sean Edwards at the scrum to Botica. Works the dummy. Oh, and he's through. He's got Aitchison in inside him. Now then, Botica's quick. He's too quick for Castleford. And that's a magnificent try for the Kiwi. Oh, superb effort from the scrum. The move completely fooled the Castleford defence behind that scrum. And Wigan. Rated underdogs this week, out to show, they're certainly not. Seventh try of the season for Frano Botica. This is good play here, a little dummy there to uh, Mather inside. Kent missed the tackle there, and Botica with all his pace. Atchison's done well there to uh, back up in case uh, Botica got in any trouble, but he never needed it because Frano Botica's got plenty of pace. Comes around under the post to make his kick that little bit easier. Botica to take the kick. Prolific scorer since his signing over from the North Shore. Race to the fastest thousand points in the game's history in just 93 matches. A bargain by 
from the All Blacks. Ranobotti. No better man to take a pressure kick. He's hardly trained uh, this week. He's had uh, trouble with uh, leg strain. Coach Dorothy taking an hour gamble with the man. But it's paying off at the moment. Successfully, the conversion. Wigan in the lead, six points to nil. You'll have a look here. There's a good run, a good pass. Fend off there on Tony Kemp there. And Frano Bonica, he's too like anything. He's very quick, Frano. And they've got no cover there, Castleford. And uh, great work. Big teenage number 13 for Wigan. Another youngster here, Mick Cassidy, 20 years of age from the Wigan uh, St. Jude's Amateur outfit. Platt. Oh, doesn't Andy Platt just looking for? He does. It's Kelvin Skerritt, he's having a run here, Ray. He's, he's, he's been in great form this game. I don't know how many times he's taken the ball up so far, but his work rate's very high. There's a very strong wind uh, behind uh, Cassifer's backs as well, uh, Steve, isn't it? So they've really got to make it tell this half. Well, they have. I think Wigan's gone out there. Sean Evans will let the run into the breeze. I think he thought, well, if we can hold him here in the first half, they'll have the win in the second half. On Edwards, adventurous there, trying to launch uh, Jason Robinson. Cassifer now looking a little perplexed by this dramatic opening by Wigan. Ian Smales, number 12, Catherman will want to settle this game down, they want to get themselves back in this game. So they've been blown out of it like a whirlwind. Brooks, doing the right job there, taking the ball at first receiver, bringing the Wigan defence into him. Forward, Richie Blackmore. Kiwi test star, New Zealand uh, new test coach, Frank Endicott, already pencilling him in for next season. Richard Russell, oh, good break by Richard Russell. He's got Aitchison in front of him, but good first tackle there from the youngster Paul Aitchison. Castleford now on the attack. Kemp, he's got Nick Carr outside him. Anderson misses the ball, but uh, in the 10, over there in the corner. But it's touch, says Mr. Brown. Castleford protesting. The miss out of Grant Anderson almost did the trick. But. No try. We'll have a look here. Kemp offloads there. Nick Alley takes it up. The long pass to uh, Middleton there. And he just, yeah, all well, the touch on said he was, he was out before he put the ball down. Mr. Brown, right with his decision. So, tremendous riposte from, uh, from Castleford. Just coming up to almost ten minutes gone here, and uh, Wigan in control. Six points to nil. Farrell, all oh, good movement by uh, Andrew Farrell there. And not too bad a kick against this very strong wing. Picked up by Stedman. Jumped to the floor there by Gary Connolly and uh, Cassidy. Problems for Richard Russell there with the uh, the knee. Probably twisted in the tackle. But of course, rugby league continues unless it's considered extremely serious. Brooks, good pass to Grant Anderson, but he just couldn't escape the clutches there of Gary Connolly. But Castleford roaring back here now, determined to get back on level terms. Brooks. Using that win, testing Aitchison again, the youngster's up to it. And he's more than up to it, evading a couple of tacklers. Jason Robinson comes in midfield well, this uh, young Wigan wing, uh, Steve. He does, he's very dangerous, Jason, because he's very strong, got strong leg power and upper body strength, he's hard to tackle. And the other wing, Martin Afire. 
McDermott making yards at the play the ball area. Well, one or two of the crowd thinking it was a knock on there, but not uh, referee Cummings. I think it should have been six again there, Ray Carter to touch the ball there. As you said, Steve, Calvin Scannon is really running powerfully. Big 16 and a half stone prop forward there, number eight. He started off full of power, Calvin, he's in for a big game. Sean Edwards holding that ball up in the wind, Stedman's missed it. Oh, and Wiggins, Cassidy taking advantage of that. That's the slip. Cowie. back on the line Botica the run around again with Edwards oh and Edwards the goodie good tackle by Richard Russell but it's still Wigan pressuring the, the Yorkshireman Connolly Edwards Botica again eight to seven to oh the youngster scoring in for the try what Paul Aitchison, just 20 years of age, signed a couple of years ago from Witness, used to be a wingman and he took that try like a wingman, coming in at the right time and picking up the try. There's a cool heading from Aitchison because he had support on the outside, he threw the dummy, he knew that St. Ellis was going to go outside, he's thrown the dummy and he's come back inside with a great try. Good work there. Ray, um, I don't think Carson would make that, this many mistakes in this shorter period than they made the whole of the last game. They've started, they may be nervous. And here we see Aitchison in the corner, steps inside like a former wingman, has the pace to score. Who said Wigan were underdogs? Well, that's it. I mean, a, a team like Wigan, I don't think you ever want to call them underdogs, if you, especially if you're playing against them. But they've come out here and, and they're playing like the champions. Whereas Carlsman's come out, they made a few early early errors, maybe it's nerves, whatever, but uh, the championship team of last year, they're certainly showing that form early. Well, there's a long, long time to go here at, uh, at Headingley, and the, this Carlsman side have plenty of talent to roar back. I don't think this uh, cup semi-final is settled for one minute. The wind, as we can see, playing uh, tricks with the ball. seem to get a lot of the uh, problems with the ball falling off these mounds of sand I wonder what uh, kickers like uh, Wiggins former Jim Sullivan and Freddie Griffiths would think of putting a ball on a mound of sand but of course they used to have boots with almost steel toe caps Fran Obotica then with a tricky kick into the wind just inside the 20 metre line. But not uh, tricky to uh, Fran Obotica. It held up in the wind, but uh, it got through the 12 0 for Wigan. And aren't those uh, Wigan fans delighted? If you have a look here on this replay here, he darts across there. Now, Aitchison does well here, throws the dummy pass, comes back inside, and uh, good try. Sean Edwards again, picking up and transferring in an exact similar routine to the previous kickoff to Andrew Powell. And just look at that uh, advantage uh, to uh, Wigan there. That's it, 62% to Wigan, it tells the whole story, 12 points up. Wigan, 14 times, Challenge Cup uh, winners. Castleford just four successful visits to the final. Part of the final being well looked after there by Lee Crooks. Edwards, Andy Platt, these two prop forwards for Wigan, Andy Platt number 10, Kelvin Skerritt to number 8, the Great Britain props getting through a lot of work. And so is this man, Sean Edwards. Picked up by Simon Middleton. Look at Skerritt in there to pop forward. When we consider he was behind Edwards' kick. Crooks. The inspiration this season for Castleford. 
big Lee Crooks looking to get his side back into contention in this semi-final. Martin Ketteridge. But Wigan moving up with a little bit of their old snap. They are, Ray. You can tell even their line is a lot better. They've got more players out wide than previous games where carthman has got the outside of them. Paul Aitchison and good support there to the kick from Grant Anderson, number four for Castle. Jason Robinson. One of the advantages of being a centre at six foot five and 14 and a half stone, you can do a forwards job. Barry John there. Martin Dermott. Training Castleford down here with the tackling and uh, Richard Duckyfield down there on the bench. Uh, how about the mood there? Uh, yeah, well, yes, Ray. Uh, you wonder though how uh, economical some of these club officials are. With the truth, the Wigan club doctor told me before the game there was barely a player in the Wigan side without an injury, all carrying injuries. It certainly doesn't look like it on this form. Castleford then driving in now. Mick Four. This is a better spell from Castleford. Just couldn't get his pass away. St. Janellis, perhaps a little too strong in that kick. And Aitchison beats him again. Certainly started off well, this young fullback. He has, he's had a good game. That's a good return of the kick there from Aitchison. I think St. Janellis is a little bit too adventurous there because they had the numbers on their cards, but if they had to move the ball through their hands. Neil Cowie. Hodmerden, Hamilton, Cassidy, oh good run by uh, Cassidy, now then he's got Robinson coming up on his outside but that's a superb cover tackle there by McFord, good covering behind, but Wigan in full flow, Botica, Dermot, Taparo, he's got Madden outside him, and a fire! Again across field, but Botica. Oh, it'll be difficult in the wind. He's missed it again, and Wigan just couldn't take advantage of it. Referee Stuart Cummins, I think, he played the original knock on off Simon Middleton. It's a good kick in from Edward, puts it up, and Jason Robinson puts a lot of pressure on Simon Middleton, He's, and they come up with another mistake, Castleford. Six there, Fran Obotica and Sean Edwards making good use of this win, holding it up in the air, letting the Wigan players run underneath it. Sean Edwards, Farrell. Castleford defending Grimley, Martin Dermott just, just a foot short. Isolated there, and I think much to the relief of the Castleford defence. Edwards looking for the switch to Calvin Skerritt. Good, uh, good defence again. The fifth tackle. Botica and Edwards a position for a drop goal. Good, it's gone to Farrell. Oh, he's missed. Left footed attempt there from the big teenage loose forward. But Castleford. You'll have a look again here. It's another good uh, good pressure again from Castleford and uh, to the right side of the post this time. Catteridge. And penalty. Barry 
John Mather being a judge to be lying on at the tackle. Referees must insist that the tackle player be allowed to get up quickly. In the replay there, they're just holding down there. They're not getting off the player there. You must release him and let him play the ball. Sigenaris. Not finding anywhere to go. Very few gaps at the moment in this Wigan defence. Ford. Catteridge. The switch of play to Crooks. Well, Lee Crooks trying to get that ball away, but coming off a Wigan player, Aitchison. A little adventurous there from Lee Crooks, I think, too adventurous, Steve. It wasn't on that pass. I think they're starting to panic a little bit, Carlton, but they're 12 points down. They need points on the board, but uh, you're not going to get them that way. And really, 12 points down is not an awful lot. They've just got to settle the game, haven't they? Well, that's it. I mean, there's a long way to go. There's half this, half to go, and then the, and then the second half. So there's still plenty of time left. John Edwards keeps putting the kicks down to that corner there to uh, Simon Middleton. Neil Cowie and Gary Connolly putting the pressure on him. And no forward uh, for Casimir to take the ball off, uh, off Mike Ford. Uh, from the Wigan bench, Sam Panapa will shortly replace Mick Cassidy. Cassidy's OK, but he's done an awful lot of graft in this game, even at this early stage, and they've decided to give him a breather. Typical of coaches these days, is the, to use all 15 men. It is, Ray, but uh, sometimes I'm not sure. Mick Cassidy's done a lot of work in defence, maybe, uh, you know, that's his forte, that he'd, he'd continue to do that. Jason Robinson did well there to, to pick that ball up. Ooh, it did even better to get it to Paul Aitchison. And there is Sam Panapa. Gary Connolly. 250,000 on centre, number four for Wigan. Germert to Cassidy, having perhaps one final run, one final fling before Panapa comes on. Botica. Wigan at the moment dominating this, this midfield. Edwards. To Andy Farrow. Oh, Farrow's out there. He's got Connolly. Connolly with a little kick. The fire's there. And it's down. Oh, tremendous effort there. It started with Farrow. It finished with Martin of fire. And he was on the spot. He's come right from the other wing. He's taken his chance, and he's taken Wigan to 16 points to nil. Martin of fire, try score a supreme. It's good play here, Andy Farrell. He gets through uh, Tony Morrison's tackle. Great balance for a big man there. He looks, he offloads to uh, Conley, and what, what about this kick? Soon Martin of fire inside him. A well-weighted kick. Martin picks it up. Before he gets to the dead ball line, puts the ball down, we can go further ahead. And I think from this kick, when we see Martin of Fire, he picks this ball up well, and I think he does even better not to overrun in that dead ball line there. That's right, Ray. He's a great athlete, Martin of Fire, and, you know, you've got to give it to him. He's always there when, uh, when a try has to be scored. Martin's always there. So, another attempt from Famobotica, two from two already. the 12 months remaining on his uh, contract at Central Park and I'm sure his former coach John Mooney with the new Auckland Warriors club there in New Zealand will be looking to lure this man over there a match winner and another two points from the goal kicking Machine takes Wigan out even further, 18 points to nil now.
There it is on the replay again. You'll see the ball. A good ball out the farrel from uh, Sean Edwards there. Now, Tony Morrison, he misses the tackle. He nearly falls over Andy Farrell. Now, that's a great kick. Martin Afire definitely onside. And this judgment here, plenty of time. Puts the ball down before he goes dead in goal. Another four points on the board. Lottica. Wigan, the cup holders, in confident mood. Neil Cowie. And uh, Keith England there, coming on a prop for Martin Ketridge, a very experienced prop forward. Sean Edwards sensibly putting it back to Aitchison. Just content to find touch on this near side. Andy Hay for Tony Morrison. Mike Ford having problems with the with the scrum. A lot of fire being stoked up there in the middle of that pack. And uh, there's obviously very perplexed on the Castleford bench as the two subs went on, as Keith England and Andy Hay went on, Alan Agar, the assistant coach, told them in no uncertain terms that there had to be more aggression, they had to get other players working, and the marking had to be much, much better. Certainly Castleford, I think, need a try um, this, uh, this half, didn't they? They do, they're going to be very depressed at half time if the if if scoreline stays at 8 0 or greater because uh, they know they'll be running into a wind in the second half. Andy Hay. Well, he uploads the ball, it is uh, picked up. Mike Ford to Stedman. And uh, John Joyner, obviously a worried coach at the moment. Ford. Catherman having to move this ball now, having to move it quickly, looking for points. 18-0 this railing. Graham Stedman. Showed a fine turn of pace there. And again, Paul Aitchison takes the ball, and again he comes away. Well, there's not much point in putting high balls up to a man who's over six foot, is there? It's not like Puzzles. The, the man that kicked at Stedman was out here on the chase. The Castleford players all stood back watching him do it. You've got to put pressure on uh, on the kick on the kick uh, kickers when you uh, when you put that up. In fact, in a way, it may be better with the ball off the floor to make the big lad bend. Exactly right. They're hard to get off the ground, and they can't. When they're up high, they they uh, already got the momentum up run, running. Botica. Edwards again used that switch with the kick as the Castleford uh, defenders come into it. Picked up well by Sinjinellis. But again, the chasers picking up Ellis equally. Panapa and Platt. Oh, Graham Stedman. Good run by Stedman, but uh, was it a trip from Sean Edwards? The Castleford crowd think so. I don't think we can do. Drops. To Anderson. And the knock on says uh, Mr. Cummings in the tackle. We can head a ball. We'll have a look here. Grant Anderson there. He's going through the good tackle. He just loses it. He definitely loses the ball there. But uh, they've made too, far too many errors so far, Castleford. Half an hour gone in this first half. 18 0 for Wigan. Castleman desperately attempting to hold the cup holders. The cup holders now looking for a return to Wembley for the seventh successive time. Unique record, but still a long way to go here at Headingley. Castleford always capable of springing a couple of tries. John Edwards to Platts. 
Sean Edwards had a lot of problems with the shoulder trouble. Yeah, the witness Wigan bench obviously are going to make some changes here. Dean Bell is going on. It looks as though Dean Bell might well go to loose forward. They're taking the prop forward off, which could mean that young Andy Farrell goes up into the front row. Johnny Wattinger just looked at that, holding up in that wind again, but well taken there by, uh, by Middleton. It's significant, all the kicks have been to that Simon Middleton uh, corner. Well, they're trying to keep it away from Cincinnati, as you see, he's got the ball now, he's a very dangerous runner. Ian Smales, Casimir, we're looking to launch this number 12 out wide, wants the centre, has an extra yard of pace to burst to attack, another man with pace, Nickow, but not this time, good tackling by Mather. Big forward. Lee Crook shrugs off the tackle, but uh, Andy Hay can't take the pass. Mistake by the youngster. The surrender possession again. We'll have a look there. Lee Crook's off loads again. Andy Hay went behind him, but they're standing too flat, Carson, but they've got to get a little bit deeper, Ray. I think that's the problem with them. Number 10, Andy Platt going off for a rest. And former Wigan skipper and Kiwi test player Dean Bell coming on. And Bell moving to loose forward, and I think that is an inspirational move. Dean Bell coming back from serious groin and hernia problems. Really is a good move, I think, by the coach, John Dorohy. It is a lift Wigan enormously, because he, he's held in high regard by all players and, and everybody at Wigan. Dean Bell. First touch of the ball. Came on a substitute last week against Lee, but hardly played this season with injuries. Edwards, Botica, Harrow, oh, try to mark Paniper, he does, but the pass goes astray. Play on, says referee Cummings. Let's drop down and head him off. Now look in, uh, Paniper goes through the hole here, and he just, just falls over, he's, he just slips, and then tries to offload at the same time. He's probably a bit unlucky there. And a good push by the... The Catterbird uh, forwards. Mr Cummings, not too happy with that. Middleton. And Bell putting Middleton down, but uh, a fight over on the far side. The uh, tempers are flaring between Kelvin Skerritt. And number 15 there, Keith England, while Scarrett faced the disciplinary committee on Thursday, he escaped with no ban. He was involved in, in uh, trouble against Featherston Rovers, and here he is again. Sean Edwards sensibly putting him to one side. Mr Brown just aiding Mr Cummings. You see, this, you see the scrum there breaks up. It's a bit hard to see there, but uh, as play goes on now, it starts going there. Well, he's having a word with, uh, with Martin Dermott. There are lots of things that can't be seen in the scrum, and it's obvious that Martin Dermott started the trouble. But I do think Calvin Scudett was involved as well, with a couple of punches, and here he is to receive, I think, his warning. And don't get involved, says Mr Cummings, nothing to do with you, I'll sort it out. And Keith England also receiving a friendly word of advice. And Castleford, the penalty. So, tempers rising, Steve. It is, it's uh, starting to get that way, so I think it's the most excitement the cast of the supporters have had so far, right? Keith England burning the brunt of the charge. Lee Crooks accompanying him. Not many penalties conceded, though. Richard Russell. 
the Wigan bench with Andy Platt. Andy, uh, Wigan went at this flat out from the start. It's gone to plan, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Uh, I think, just discussing from make a break right there. I think in the week, you know, a lot of people, including some of our own spectators, have wrote us off and said that we're, we're a has-been team and, you know, that, uh, that, that the glory had gone at Wigan. I think that motivated the, fl the, the players uh, this week and we showed in the first 20 minutes, you know, what a good side we still are. Absolutely. Did the underdogs affect you, you think, that tag? No, I think that we quite enjoy being underdogs. Uh, that puts, you know, that makes you spurs on a little bit. I think people, uh, including some of our own spectators, like to adopt that potential spur you on. Excellent. Driving in then with a chance from that penalty. Keith England kicking it forward. Oh, has he wasted those six tackles? I'm certain he has seen. Ah, uh, we were short in defence at both sides, especially on their right hand side. That silly play on the first tackle. The pressure was there. Keith England thought he had a chance. And it's Wigan who are coming away with it. Jason Robinson. The pressure let off there for the cup holders. And Edwards, he'll keep things ticking over to Farrell. Former England Schoolboys League and Union player, Sean Edwards. Edwards again. Keeping that ball low against the a strong wind. Graham Stedman having little difficulty. The pitch in ideal condition, judging the bounce. And Castle been desperate for a score before half time. Just less than two minutes remaining. 18 0 for Wigan. Crooks. Interesting to see how Wigan are clamping the ball with Lee Crooks there, Neil Cowie. They don't want those short passes from him, do they? Well, they know how, how good he is at offloading there. Once you, once you stop Lee Crooks, you've got to cover the ball up then. Forward, Nick Howe. forward being hurried into that turn kick from Bottica, picking it up well, using that sidestep well. Number six for Wigan. Robinson. Kelvin Skerritts. Wigan, I'm sure, quite content to settle for this lead. They've played in many a semi-final. Oh, and Jason Robinson, a nasty knock there. Surely he should be into the blood bin. Neil Cowie. Edwards again at first receiver. Didn't really intend the ball to go there, I think. It was pressured, but... Uh, St. Janellis gratefully accepts. Forward. Kent. Stedman. They have an overlap here. Nick Alvin worked them all out. He gets it to Middleton. Middleton coming down the middle. Oh, and they looked a high tackle there from Edwards that didn't connect. Well, a penalty has been given. It was for the holding down, holding the ankle. Seconds ticking away here. Castleford desperate to trouble the scoreboard. Into injury time now, Richard Russell. More tackles remaining in this sequence. Castle would have got to take advantage of it. Forward to Nickow. Running at the angle, but uh, picked up well by Bell and Cowie. Neil Cowie doing a tremendous grafting job. St. John Ellis steps out of one tackle. Steps into another. And still the Wigan defence holds. Ford. Tony Kemp, he's got an oh, and Andy Hay outside him. He's got Richard Dagmore. Just pulled down. Play on, says uh, the referee. Well, he's taking another knock on. 
chance there, Steve. There was a chance there. They've got the food cast, but here, I'd like to have a look at this. This here, you, you haven't seen it, but I thought Blackmore might have dropped it first. But uh, Castleman are going to get the feed out of this scrum. They certainly need to try before half-time, Ray. No. Yes. Yes, and Robinson having trouble with that uh, mouth and nosebleed. And I can't see how Mr Cummins can uh, allow him to stay on if it continues. Right on to half-time. Castleman in possession. Tawana Nikau. He's got Kat with him. Ken gets it to Stedman. Stedman did very, very well there. Good coordination between foot and hand. Battling against the half-time hooter, Castleford. Ken, oh, it was thrown wildly there. Chances going begging here for Castleford with that last loose pass, Sir Steve. It's just panic football. They're trying to score off every play. They had six tackles there. They want to score off the first, second and third. All There's right, still time. They should have, should have used up all their tackles. Sam Panapa. Wigan waiting to hear that uh, half-time hooter. Farrell. Again, it's poor Simon Middleton having to do all the work. And there is the uh, Hooter. A successful half for Wigan. Rightly being applauded off the field. 18 points to nil at half time. They'll go into those dressing rooms quite calm. And we were we were talking about Wigan having some prolific point scorers behind the scrum earlier on. And here's one from Obotica revealing the pace and the eye for the gap for that opening try. Superb running from the Kiwi. And confidence from this man, Aitchison. Aitchison, yeah, he's a fine young player. Good dummy, good step back infield. You know, puts the ball down correctly, falls on the ground, it was uh, good work. And people keep telling me that uh, Martin O'Fire has lost his hunger for tries, but just watch him here. He comes in off the other wing. He senses there's something there. And he pounces. Wigan with the wind at the max. Castleford, everything to do. Keith England. And Dean Bell certainly getting stuck into the action there, number 14. Trouble with that to groin. Dickow to Kent. The Wigan tackling very, very sure. Jason Robinson there. Andy Hay. With uh, Alan Agar, the Castleford assistant coach. Alan, this is looking pretty gloomy. What can you do about it? The game's not over, Richard. It didn't go. We had to have the best of halves. They put us under pressure and we succumbed, unfortunately. But we've not held the ball for sets of six up to now and we've given, we haven't subject them to any pressure. That's what we've, we're aiming to do this half, is play the sixes in sets, put them under some pressure and see if we can get some out of it. More discipline, fewer mistakes. More dirt connection today. Thanks, Al. There's often one advantage uh, with playing against the wind, and that is the passes uh, hold better, don't they? They do. Sometimes when you're playing with the wind, it's not to your advantage, because as you talk about your passes, but sometimes your kicks keep going dead in goal. Calvin Skerrin charging in again. He's relishing the, uh, the atmosphere here at Headingley. The big prop, Sean Edwards, Dean Bell, takes some pulling down, he's played quite a few times in the loose forward the position, normally a centre, Edwards again, Botica, Barry John Mather looking for the quick pass to Robinson, but the youngster forced to pick it up. Just keeping Wigan moving forward, pushing down to the corners. Must be the tallest centre in the game, number three, six foot five, former line out player. Chats of Wigan, Wigan, Wigan rolling around the terraces. Middleton.
Nicole. He's certainly working hard, this uh, New Zealand uh, test player. And he's just not quite getting the breaks, is he? He's not. Uh, he's a very good player. His work rate's very high, Nicole. Very speedy man on the break. Horn, Crooks. Significant three tacklers around Lee Brooks every time to stop that ball. Well, he's such a big man and he takes three men, pull him down. That's why he's still got that great skill that he can stand and still offload. Ford, Stedman. Well, he was put in a difficult condition, but he tied those record players up. He's got plenty of space as Ben Stedman to Blackmore. Blackmore to St. Ellis. Sean Edwards is there. Good covering again. Copy book half back play from that number seven, Sean Edwards. He's either taken a knock or proving the old old Jeff. But what a wonderful record from Sean Edwards there. Played in all 34 cup ties. He's had a lot of trouble with that shoulder. May have taken a knock on it. Here's Sean Edwards. He's falling on the ball here. Well, he just fell on his back a little bit there. He, he may, may have uh, felt a little bit of pain in his back. I think he may have felt the impact of that knee on the shoulder. Yeah. Jason Robinson feeling the impact of Lee Crooks and he plays the ball himself, you can do if no one is marking intelligent play there by the Great Britain wing Dermot risking a one-handed pass, picked up by Ford and Sean Edwards is absolutely furious at losing possession there Middleton good run from Simon Middleton but he's been dropped into touch. And once again, Castleford letting the pressure go off, Thirsty. That's it, Ray. Like we were talking about before, they're trying to score off every play. But um, there's no need to. They've lost the ball first up. Team tackles, you can have a look at that, 105 to 71. Connolly. fitter as every minute goes by played very little rugby and I sense a determination in the, the Castleford ranks they're not going to lie down and take this defeat Cowie, good chatting again Smales, pounding in Keith England having a good game the Castleford substitute number 15 since his arrival on field and Sean Edwards sensibly getting play well away from the, the Wigan line that was sensible play from this man, Edwards. He realised Castleford were really breezing in there, Steve. But it's also a good play because he's put the ball down in the touch. He hasn't kicked the ball in, dead in goal already. He had a stop play there. We're going to get a rest because they're in front. That's good play. Stuart Cummins from Witness, not entirely happy with that scrum. He is now. Middleton missed out on Wembley a couple of seasons ago. He'd be more determined than most of these Casper players to get there. Grant Anderson. Oh, that looked a high tackle to me. From Barry John Manor, Grant Anderson, I think, thinks so, but Mr. Cummins says not. Ken to Smears, Castleford running better now. Forwards moving onto the ball. Well, they were. Andy Hay. Out. I get the feeling, uh, Steve, a lot of work has been done on this Wigan defence this week because that was a problem for them earlier this season. Yeah, they've recovered good. Every time Carthwood has made a break or looked dangerous, there's been someone there to recover for them. James Stedman finding touch there. There's a replay here. It's a kick from Stedman. It's a good kick also. They need to keep the ball in play, um, Carlton, but they don't need to slow the game down. Carlton but just having the edge on possession from the scrum, but of course all with the head as this one. A fire. Well held. Botica. Mather. Oh! And Aitchison tries to shrug off Stedman, but he hangs in there with St. Janelis. But it's Wigan on the attack. 
switching it again. Edwards to Connolly. Connolly, Dermot. Bell's missed out. Just get it. The powerful prop. Panabell. Wigan driving for the line. Oh, just look at that Castleford cover. Testament to Castleford there. Five. Yorkshireman there. Shrugging Farrow down. Wonderful break. Wonderful rugby. Danger in so many of these players on this field. Any one of them can suddenly produce a try. But that was good defence from Castleman in the final analysis. That was good defence because that duffel back after that long break and uh, they recovered very good. They end up putting Andy Farrell into touch because uh, we can look very dangerous there. Big forward, he knows he's got to move his ball around and that's a, a high tackle. Grant Anderson doesn't relish it. Here's Grant Anderson coming in here now, he's got the ball. I don't think that was a high tackle, that was only around the chest, that tackle. I think that might have been a little bit of overreacting there. But I think the one previously was worse than that. It was, that, that wasn't, there was nothing wrong with that tackle then. Nevertheless, it's a penalty. The kick to touch and possession to Castleford. And it's Castleford working up ahead of steam now. Keith England. Good pass to Richard Russell. Well, he had to look for a gap there. He didn't have the support. Crooks gets the ball to forward with the knock on. Edwards. Connolly. John Edwards again at first uh, receiver, launching these uh, these forwards. Mick Ford, the Casabas scrum half, said they had to cut Edwards down. They had to stop his uh, his kicks. They had to stop the short passes. They haven't done. Here he is, acting half back. Cowie. Edwards. I was talking to Peter Fox, the Bradford Northern coach, before the game, and he was saying how Edwards dominates and directs everything. He does. He's a good player, Sean Edwards. And if you give him the latitude that uh, Carter would have given him, given him today, he will play like that. Oh, good play by Graham Stedman. He treats took that ball beautifully and then even had the time to step out of a tackle. St. Janellis doing the same. Fifty minutes gone, Wigan still in control, 18 points to nil and a little uh, problem between uh, Cowie and St. Janellis resolved, play continuing. Good luck pass to Nick Al. Oh, that's good running by Grant Anderson. He's got Ford inside him. Oh, and well picked up. It was a knock-on, but it was stopped. It stopped the play. Anderson, uh, number four, good run. Is the overhead pass from Anderson that goes onto the ground. Dean Bell tries to recover. May have been a bit unlucky there, Dean Bell, and he's back to his own, to the opposition goal line. Castleford really showing their skills now. No way is this game over. Keith England driving in at the corner there. He had smells outside him. Wigan's turn now to defend. Tony Kemp. Oh, Sean Edwards surely was offside there. He came up very, very quickly. Ford, there's an overlap on this side. Oh, Ian Smells drops the ball. Certain try on there at the corner. It's a good pass there. Now Blackmore out to now I'm not sure. I think Smiles trying to let the ball go for St. Janellis to get it. He hesitated, end up dropping the ball. And just once again they've panicked again, Castleford. And there's the uh, the story. Eight yeah. handling errors for Castleford. And most of those, Steve, have been within that 10 meter of the Wigan try line. They have, they've just panicked. But just uh, as, as we were saying before, they never made that many mistakes in the whole of the last probably two, two times they played Wigan. So, Wigan still with that 18 0 lead. But Castleford really making a second half of this. Sean Edwards.
Scarrets. Never afraid of the, the hard work, Kelvin Scarrett, Great Britain uh, what? former Bradford Northern player. Hannaper, Mather. Martin Dermott, again another player in doubt this week. Elbow, left elbow, heavily bandaged, has been dislocated two or three times this season. St. now with plenty of uh, space. In the Great Britain squad, this number two to face France at uh, Carcassonne next week. Waiting to come on. And the uh, word from the Wigan bench uh, quite clearly, and it's going to be proved by this substitution, is that John Donahue was keen to spell his forwards throughout this game to keep them as fresh as possible. And uh, that's what he's doing, following that policy by putting Andy Platt back onto the field and taking Neil Cowie off. Neckow. Macnaw holding up with the ball back to Tony Kemp and Castleford really to throw the ball around but losing it in the process they've got to take risks haven't they well it's the last tackle and they did they try to keep it alive there so uh, they've come up with the uh, mistake Martin if I, do you know uh, Steve people were were telling me that Martin O'Fire was not as dangerous as uh, in previous seasons but he's certainly looking at today he is he's a good player he's always there somewhere here's the incident now we just see uh, Martin goes down with the ball here just waiting. I think St. Janelle has come in late with a swinging arm on top there, which is, which is uncalled for. Silly play when you're under pressure. Puts your team under, under a little bit of more pressure. Andy Platts back into the action straight away for Neil Cowie. Wigan with eight or ten top quality forwards in the squad using the movement of them around here today Edwards, Botica plenty of target there on the manager of Mather for the Casabit defenders to go at Platt again sat out for half an hour coming on fresh to Platt and uh, the forward down, but Botica to Andy Farrell, and it's Wigan now, they've taken some uh, hammer in the last 15 minutes, Wigan coming back, Botica, an attempt to drop again, oh, it's hit the upright, it's hanging on his ball, but a knock on, a knock on by Wigan on the last tackle, Casimir in possession, trying to run this ball from their own line, Nickow, He played it forward, there was a man marking, but he had the speed of thought to play it back, and it's Richard Russell. The players, though, are really thinking now, aren't they, Steve, to try to get points on the board. They are, that was, that was quite legal what he'd done, he played the ball forward, then back with his foot. If he had to pick the ball up, it would have been a penalty. Another handling error by Castleford. And one by Wigan. Play on, says Mr Cummings. I think we really are at the interesting stage in this uh, this game now. Castleford, desperate to get a try on the board. They really do need points to cause Wigan to think again. Really making 
Wigan work for the win. Stedman. Oh, that's got some height on it. Some fires underneath. He picks it up, but uh, it's a penalty to Wigan. Ian Smales going for the man and not the ball. This is definitely a penalty. Smales never ever attempted to go for the ball. The only one thing in his mind was going for Mark the fire, and uh, we can get a penalty out of it to take the pressure off him once again. Cassidy. Calvin Scarrits. Martin Dermott back off. Panapa. Been in outstanding form this season, Sam Panapa, a try in his last eight matches. Bell. Farrell. Okay, come on. And Jeffrey Lofthouse, an interested spectator, the deputy speaker of the House of Commons. Botica. Andy Platts. Wigan have soaked up the pressure this half, haven't they? They have. Now they've got two fresh players on and Platt and, uh, and Cassidy. I think they'll go on, on with it from here. See a dummy half there, just a little knock on by Russell, but uh, good work from the touch judge. He's seen it. Let the referee know, and there's a scrub with a Wigan feed. Yes, good understanding there between the touch judge and the referee. All three officials looking together. Mr. Cummins just uh, having a word with the two uh, halves just to let each other put the ball in, he says. Potica. Bell operating out in the midfield now. Jason Robinson. We're good edging into that 20 meter area. Cassidy, Botica, Edwards. Edwards again looking to launch Farrell. He does, but a good tackle again by Richard Russell. Cassidy. The short pass to Skerritt. Catherine looking up with that short side well. But still Wigan coming forward, looking for more points. Here's a chance now. Oh, Botica, the little rubber kick. It's a fire going for it. Just eludes him. Well worth the kick there with a speed to like Martin of fire. Superb finisher. It was a good kick in from Fred O'Bonnet. He assumed that he never had the numbers out there. Casper had too many defenders, so he put the little kick in, well weighted, and uh, good recovery from St. And well, the dropout under the post when uh, Casper Perry punches the ball dead. So you don't escape the, the pressure. Jason Robinson, fiery little customer. Billy Wiz, as he's known as. Cassidy, having a go himself. A try here would surely kill Catterford's hopes. Edwards to Connolly. Uh, looked like a fist going in there, but to uh, play on. Platt. Held up. The fifth tackle. There are three men positioned for the drop goal. Edwards, Farrell. But Edwards, he's going for the try. He's held up on his back. He scored 19 tries in the previous 34 cup round wins as Sean Edwards.
Martin Dermott on the Wigan bench. Martin, this has been a remarkably good performance by Wigan, but exhausting, I think, as well. Yeah, it's exhausting. We prefer well for, for the game, but today all we've done is uh, ball control and the hard yards up the middle. The lads are putting their bodies on the line, and as you can see, he's playing dividends. How much was the tag of underdog in part of Wigan's performance today? Uh, well, we don't think of it that way. All we think about is Wembley. That's the call out there. All we're saying is Wembley, Wembley. We know what it's like to be there, and we know what it's like to win. couldn't finish it off. I never, and once again, um, St. Janellis has opted for that little kick for himself. He's done it three times now, I think, Ray. Just kick for himself, and it hasn't come off. This probably would have been better holding on to the ball. Andy Platt, but it's fast, it's fierce, and it's furious out there in the middle. Might not seem so, but I'm sure these forwards are enjoying themselves. St. Janellis, another chance. Keith England coming back on the field with the bandage around his head and another man with a bandage around his head, Richard Russell loses the ball again every time Castleford set up an attack every time they put pressure on that Wigan line disaster strikes you see here it's a great tackle from Martin the fire as he tackles he just knocks the ball out of, it, of England over um, catch, uh, sorry, Russell's hands and Wigan come up with possession Cassidy sensibly taking the ball away from the absolute half-back position, allowing his forwards to regroup, to settle. Really being played at a terrific pace this match. Smales, and a high tackle there around the deck of Diva. Mr Cummins seemed to have allowed the tackle, but it's certainly uh, a high one. Have a look at this here. That's definitely jumped up in the air to make that tackle. He penalised it right before for a chest tackle. This time, this is definitely, he's jumped up off, he's off the ground when he made that tackle. Uh, I don't think you can get much higher than that, Steve. No, I know. I think it should have been penalised. But play continues. Simon Middleton. And I'm sure they will be offside, it is. But that kick by... John Edwards, Jason Robinson encroaching within the 10 metres of the defender. Graham Steadman, I think he knows what's, what has to be done. It's a case of whether Castleford can do it. It literally is at 100 miles an hour at the moment, isn't it? It is. Both teams have put plenty into this. You can tell by they were they were about 20 minutes into the game that uh, a lot of a lot of players were feeling the pitch. And John Dodder, he's been under a lot of pressure in recent weeks by many Wigan fans, but uh, looking to come up trumps here. James Steadman. running the ball, yeah, Dean Bell, that was a high tackle, but it wasn't any higher than the tackle that Dean Bell copped himself before. And, uh, Mr Cummins just uh, having a word with uh, Dean Bell, I think it was his attitude that he was not too, uh, too happy with when he went away from him the first time. But I think I sense that both, both sides, especially both packs, they know now that in that vital area, aren't they? Yeah, exactly right. Crooks, Castleford now taking the play to Wigan. This Yorkshire side are not finished yet. 18 points to nil down. 13 minutes remaining here at Headingley. Mike Ford. 
well looked after there by Cassidy. Tony Kent, he's got Smales with him. Anderson. But still these men in cherry and white move forward. Still they put Cassidy down. Kemp again. Crooks. Trying to catch out Martin O'Fire. He's got to that ball now then. Martin O'Fire. Can we see one of his runs? No. And it's the handover to Werder Nikau. Driving in. That way, in fact, it was a penalty to Castle, didn't they elect to play the ball? It was a voluntary tackle from Martin the Fire there. He never he was ta he wasn't tackled, he went down himself, and that was a penalty. Castle could have had a kick there, they chose to play the ball. And it's Wigan now hacking this ball forward. Danny Connolly, he had spares in the chase. Graham Stafford's with him. Connolly's going for it, so is Panapa. And he's giving the penalty. Mr. Cummins is going to give the penalty. Stedman got back, but that didn't matter. Connolly impeded. I think you'll find he, he may be he may be lucky not to have a, pe a penalty try against his smiles. I think that that could have been a penalty try, Ray, because he, he was tackled without the ball, never looked like getting the ball, and uh, Smiles knew that. And I, and I think so too, Steve. And he's. Uh, He's sending uh, Ian Smales to the sin bin. Ten minutes in the sin bin for that. Almost an obstruction try. Certainly Ian Smales now take uh, hardly any further part in this match. And really, I think we've got to ask ourselves, should that have been a try, Steve? I, I think it should. I think it should have been because... He was, Connolly was definitely the first man there. He was well in front of Smiles there. Smiles had to dive to make the tackle. And uh, there's no way in the world that he thought that, that Connolly had the ball. It was still on the ground. But uh, Wiggins from Obotica, gratefully accepting the chance for two points. And surely, if this ball went between the uprights and one man down for Castleford, would be the end. Pranobotic. Just a metre inside that 20 metre area, to the right of the pulse. He strikes it perfectly, straight between the middle. Two more points for Wigan, and surely Wigan are on their way back again to Wembley. You'll have, you'll have a look here. Here's uh, Conley. Now, look, he never attempted any, anything to do with the ball there, uh, Smiles. Was all he ever done was try to make the tackle on Conley. And I think Conley may have scored from that after that. All I can assume is that the referee felt that Graham Stedman may have even got there first. Well, he may have done, but I doubt it very much. But uh, I think it was worth more than just a sin bidding that. Edwards. Sampanapa. Wigan Sampanapa driving forward again. He gets that ball to Martin of Fire. He's going for the corner. Oh, but Graham Stedman's picked it up. Now then, Castleford have got to attack. They can't just hang around with that ball here. Nine minutes remaining. Andy Hay. Scarrett's and Platt moving up very, very quickly for prop forwards. Russell. This Wigan defence being tight. Drops. St. Janalis trying to steal a march there on uh, Wigan. He did well, gained 15 valuable yards, and Kelvin Skerritt, another one in the walls, bleeding from the nose. Nickow. Anderson, he's got some space there. He's got Aitchison in front of him. Ed 
backwards, each isn't racing back, but it's Jason Robinson to the rescue. The teenage wing. And the confident wing as well. Bleeding as well. Certainly one or two players have taken some knocks around the head. Martin will fire. sequence of six tackles waiting for the kick coming from Botica oh he sensed the uh, colour was up what a knockout an interesting kick there from uh, Fran Botica he sensed the Castleford were up very very flat he hoped to open them up it didn't work and both coaches, but I think it's John Dorohy who's on his way to Wembley. Brooks. Neil Cowie there, the man on the field for Kelvin Skerritt. This Wigan tackling still sure, still sound. Displayed great fitness here today, and the uh, the cup holders moving up the line very, very quickly. But still, Castleford coming back. Surely they deserve a try. These Yorkshiremen. Tony Kemp. That's a bit too deep. You think perhaps Castleford have put too many of these little rubber kicks in near the line, there, Steve? I think they have because they're trying all those kicks in the week, especially on early tackles over trying. They haven't they haven't numbered off. A lot of times they've had more players in attack than we can have defence, but they've elected to put those little kicks in or cut out passes. Sam Panifer moved back to the loose forward position. To, to his credit, Keith England came back and Fran Obotica, the Kiwi, the man of the match. All credit to, to Casliver, they've never surrendered in this match. They've uh, kept moving forward into the tackle as strong and as aggressive as at the kickoff. Stedman. We see Castleford there, the pressure they put Wigan under this half. I have, it's, it's not much difference in the uh, the territorial advantage part there uh, for Castleford. But they have played a lot better this half, Castleford, attack and defence. They still come up with the odd mistakes here because I think under pressure, you just panic that little bit. That's been the problem, but again, if, if one can be sympathetic to Castleford, when you're 18-0 down, you've got to put the odd pass in that you don't want to put in, haven't you? You do, like, you know, I mean, that was a good pass. Uh, Russell there just, I don't know, took his eyes off, whatever, but there was nothing wrong with the pass. He should have caught that. Dean Bell. I think one of the advances in this Wigan side is that many of these players, like uh, Bell, like Panifer, like this man Mallard, who's started his career in the pack here, this number three, they can play many, many positions. Versatility, but here's one man with a position that everyone knows, the Great Britain prop, Andy Platt. Botica, switch with Edwards, a further switch with Farrell. It's Wigan running confidently now, looking for more points. Just less than four minutes remaining, 20 points to nil. Neil Cowan. Mick Cassidy, he won't be put down. He is. The fifth tackle, Martin O'Fire looking to... Steal a try, but uh, a knock on, says uh, Mr. Brown, the touch judge. And it'll be a winning ball. You see the replay, good work from Mark the Fire. It looks for Jason Robertson, but it's just knocked down there by uh, Middleton. We can get the feed in this scrum. So, Wigan, three minutes remaining. 
six more tackles on this Catherwood line. Botica, the move with Robinson, long ball to Bell. Or fire, give him some space on the outside. Back to Bell. Connolly, but that's good cover again by uh, by Castleford. They had three defenders over there sliding across. Wigan may have scored the tries, but they've had to work for them. Sam Panifer. Edwards directing operations again. Tamada. Mather, he's got some space here. Sam Panifer going for the line. Oh, the pass went astray. The last pass went astray. And Calvin scattered. He wants another taste of the action. I think you might find they'll still get the food wing in here because yeah, I think uh, St. Genovis might have dropped the ball first before Gary Conley did. Now he's given it to uh, Castleford. Well, Mr. Cummins giving it to Castleford. Perhaps a last attempt for Castleford to put some points on the scoreboard. Mick Ford, he's worked hard all afternoon. To, to Richie Blackmore, Blackmore now then, he's got Grant Anderson with him. Jonathan. Middleton again, but it was a height of uh, Barry John Mather who just deflected that ball. England beats resistance, still gets that ball away. Tony Kemp is ninth of the season. Have a look here, they let Nick out stand in the tackle, he's still going. Offloads to Tony Kemp. It may have been a little bit marginal of the pass, but Kemp goes there. Now Bodica comes to him. He pushes Bodica off there. Now Bodica can't get him again. He's just too powerful, Tony Kemp. Scores in the corner. But it's all too late. It certainly is a good try. It's a superb example of the one handed pass from Nick out. And this is not so much speed, Bottica is faster, but it's sheer strength and determination. I want to score, says uh, Tony Kemp, and he does. And the kick from Lee Crooks. 102 goals this season, but this one really academic. Hold up in the wind, but it just sneaks over that crossbar. Good kick from uh, Lee Crooks. And at last, something for those Castlewood fans to smile about. 20 points to six to Wigan. You'll have a look here, here's the replay again. Out there, now Nickow, here's where it comes. They let him stand, still stands again. Off, offload Kemp, now Bodica comes across there. Just fends him off, and he still goes. Now, Paul Atchison got himself in a situation there where he was unsure whether to go for, go for um, Kemp or not. Kiwi test player, Tony Kemp. So, it looks as if Wigan are now going to face the winners of Leeds and St Helens, which will take place here on Grandstand in a couple of weeks' time. And I'm sure Leeds... St Helens will have noted John Dora his team's performance here this afternoon. No doubt Doug Lawton, the Leeds coach, and Eddie Hughes will be studying the videos intently. McFord and still Catherine moving forward. St John Ellis. Oh, good run by Ellis. But there's the hooter. It's all over. Wigan's incredible challenge cup run continues. Now 35.